Okay, so today's class for electrical principles and technologies is topic two, electricity within a, within a circuit. So last class, we talked about static electricity. Um, so electricity is a type of energy that can build up in one place or flow from one place to another. So um, when it gathers in one place, that's what we were looking at last class, that would be static electricity. Okay, so the word static itself means something that doesn't move. And then electricity that moves from one place to another, that would be called current electricity. All right, so just showing here static electricity and then current electricity is flowing um, within a circuit. So what is a circuit? So a circuit, it provides a continuous pathway for charges to move, right? It has to be continuous. And then that steady flow of charged particles, that is called electrical current. And this is the type of electricity we need to operate electrical devices, all right? Like televisions and light bulbs and, and so on. So unlike static electricity, an electric current, it will flow continuously as long as these two conditions are met. Firstly, um, the flow of electrical current, it requires an energy source. So such as a battery. Secondly, the electric current, it won't flow unless it has a complete path. That's the circuit. All right. So those charged particles have to be able to flow through a complete path or circuit. And next we're going to look at circuit elements and diagrams. So circuits are made up of these four basic elements. So there has to be a source, which is the source of electrical energy, like a battery. There has to be a conductor. So this would be the wiring through which the current flows. Um, a good conducting material like metal, like copper. Um, of the load, these are the items along the circuit that are going to convert the electricity into other forms of energy. For example, it could be light bulbs or motors or heaters or speakers. And then there's a control. This is a switch, or it's a device that can turn the circuit or devices along it on or off. So when we look at this diagram here, um, this diagram is showing those four basic components of electric circuits. So it has the source right here. Um, that is the battery. Um, there's the conductor. Those are wires. So anything like this, those are the wiring. Um, then we have the load. So this is an example of a load. It could be a bulb or any other resistor. And then there's a control switch, okay, to um, turn this on or off. All right, just looking at the parts of a circuit again. Um, so again, the four basic parts, the source, the conductor, the switching mechanism, and the load. Okay, the source provides the energy, so again here, the energy source, um, that's going to supply the electrons for the circuit, so like the battery. The conductor is the pathway for the current, those are the wires, just shown as the straight lines. Um, the switching mechanism, there's the switch right there, that controls current flow, you can turn it on and off. Um, and then the load, in this case here, that's the load, the light bulb. Um, and it's going to convert electrical energy into some other form of energy, such as light and heat. All right, so uh, when we look at a battery, it is a combination of cells. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Um, you can use a switch to open or close a circuit to control the current through it. So when you look at it here, um, it's open. So therefore, the circuit will not flow. Um, when it's closed, it's not closed here either, but when it's closed, it will be a continuous pathway. Um, the resistor symbol um, can be used to represent one of many different loads. A common one is the lamp or the light bulb. Um, it's used so much, that's why it has its own symbol, which is a lamp. And then circuit diagrams, they are drawn in a standard way. Um, to make them simple and easy to prepare and read. So when we make circuit diagrams, they have to meet the following criteria. Um, so draw with a pencil, use a ruler, 
Um, if you have graph paper, um, that works, but unlined pages work as well. Um, so notice how all of our diagrams that we looked at, the two that we looked at, they're all rectangular in shape or square in shape. So that's important um, to place the components in a rectangular or square arrangement. Um, the conductors, make sure you're using straight lines with right angled or square corners, right? So again, if we look at our um, conductors, which are our wiring, it's all shown as straight lines, okay? And everything in the corners has right angles. Um, next, if possible, arrange your diagram so the conductors are not crossing, and then just make sure it's drawn neatly, making sure your symbols are a consistent size. All right, these are some symbols, some circuit symbols um, that you guys need to be aware of. Um, their circuit symbols are similar to words. They make communication quick and accurate. So a straight line like this, that represents a conducting wire. This is a cell. And then as we, as we add on more cells, it becomes a battery. All right, you have the positive end and the negative end. Same here, you have the positive end and the negative end of the battery. This symbol represents a lamp. This represents a switch and this represents a resistor. Okay, just some more symbols here. So we looked at the conductor, we looked at the cell. Um, so it stores electricity. A battery is a combination of cells. So here we would have two cells, a lamp, a resistor, a switch. This is an ammeter. We'll talk a little bit more about this and we'll see it when we do our lab. An ammeter measures the amount of current in a circuit. A voltmeter, shown with the circle and the V, that will measure the voltage across the device in a circuit. Um, a rheostat, this is a um, symbol for a motor, and then this is a symbol for a fuse. All right, so a motor would be converting electricity to mechanical energy. So for an example, like a fan, that would be um, like an example. A fuse here, um, we'll talk a little bit more about fuses later, but fuses are there for safety. Um, they will melt. Um, if the current in the circuit gets too high, um, therefore avoiding fires and so on. Um, right, so next we are looking at measuring current. So electric current, this is the amount of charge that passes a point in a conducting wire every second. And the symbol for current is the capital I. That's the symbol for current, but it is measured in amperes, capital A, or in milliamperes, MA. So currents in common electric devices can range from a few milliamperes to dozens of amperes. All right, so again, the current, the symbol for current is the capital I, the unit for current is amperes or milliamperes, um, and then time, the symbol for time is T, and it's measured in seconds. And here we're just looking at household appliances, and then just some currents in household appliances for like a toaster, it's about 8.8 .8 amperes, um, an electric kettle, it's 12.5 amperes, a microwave oven, 11.7 .7 amperes. Just some examples there. And then these are two devices uh, or instruments. So there's the galvanometer, and this is used to measure very weak electric current, and then there's an ammeter, and this one would measure larger currents. Okay, so this is an example, it's the capital G there, that would be a galvanometer, and then here, capital A, that would be an ammeter, and both of them measure electric current. Galvanometer just is used to measure very weak electric current. All right, next, measuring voltage. So electrical energy, this is the energy that's carried by charged particles. And when we talk about voltage, this is the measure of how much electrical energy each charged particle carries. And potential difference is another term for voltage. Um, so potential difference is the difference in energy per unit of charge between one point in the circuit and another point in the circuit. And this we'll take a look at um, when we do the lab. 
So the unit for voltage is the volt, capital V, and it's the standard unit for potential difference, uh, named after Alessandro Volta. Um, he built the first battery. And just like we saw the galvanometer and the, we saw the ammeter, there is a voltmeter, and this device would measure voltage. All right, so again, potential difference, which is also voltage. The symbol for it is V. The unit is volts, which is also V. Um, energy, the symbol for energy is capital E, and then the unit for energy is in joules. And this device here, it's a multimeter. So first of all, it's digital, and it's a multimeter, meaning it can measure many different um, units. It can measure voltage, current, and other characteristics of electric currents or circuits. All right, so we'll pause here and watch a couple of these videos.